Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mind of. Today we're going to be covering Crystalis on his gyrocopter. Really interesting game here. He goes pretty crazy. 11, 1, and 12 with some gross net worth. I'm talking dirty levels of net worth here. You know, we're, we're talking, we're talking four items, minute 27. I mean, I count Chris, it's a cheap item, but honestly, such a high damage item for 1900 gold. I guess it gives nothing else, but either way, we're going to watch some Chrysalis Gyro, see how he pops off this match. To be fair, I mean, I, I don't think his matchups are insanely good. I think the main thing that uh, Gyro would be picked this game for is the Enigma matchup. If you don't know why Gyro is picked for Enigma... Basically, it's flat cannon kills Eidolons, and eventually, later as the game goes along, you can pop Satanic when you're going to get Black Hold, and the Ags, your Aghanim Scepter, will keep attacking, allowing you to heal during Black Hole, which is quite convenient. It's very powerful and gives you an answer to Black Hole. So basically, you win the game, and then you uh, play high tempo, which is good against Enigma, and you have an answer to Black Hole. So it's kind of like one of those carry heroes that just happens to have everything going for himself against Enigma. But this lane goes crazy good. Now, to be fair, it is a gyro, uh, you know, Marcy. Marcy is extremely good, extremely good with gyro because of the fact that every single time you click flak, you can click sidekick and get bonus damage on flak, which is extremely powerful. So that right off the bat, I mean, honestly, definitely surprised to see that uh, Toby would just feed away his Eidolons here. Honestly, I think this is very just bad. I mean, it's a great pounce from Zayak. Because I, do, I don't think the Eidolons die to three Flax. I think they die to four, but obviously it's not four. It's three at level one. But with the Pounce, it gets the job done. So beautifully done from Zayak there. And now Crystalis is going to have to shove the wave. Which, which typically would be the downside. But the thing is, with the wave shoving in here, you can play really aggressive. As we'll see, and instantly uh, as the Eidolons spawn, the Flax comes out. And now the Eidolons are taken out of the picture. Great harass from Zayak there. And then, I wonder if he'll... Yeah, okay, he is going to try to flak again. And he gets a couple of the Eidolons. And the thing is, if, if the Enigma player isn't comfortable in the matchup, they're going to feed Eidolons off cooldown. And that's kind of what happened there, to be perfectly honest. Like, Toby just wasn't disciplined enough and, and fed away the Eidolons. And this snowballs really quickly. If you aren't careful, Gyro's net worth will go completely out of control. As we see another good flak onto the Eidolons, putting them in complete death range. And I don't think it's... I understand what Toby's doing. He's basically trying to just make it where, you know, he's still getting denies on the range creeps. But I think he should have a little bit of patience to maybe try to wait for, like, a Nyx stun. Or a situation where he could pull creep aggro. And then, I don't know. I think he just needs to wait so he can summon the Eidolons here. And then you can position him in the tree line where you can actually juke the Eidolons into the tree line when uh, the flak comes out. If you're fast enough, you can dodge two of the flaks, and that's good enough. Um, but I don't really feel like he's attempted to do that, and so the Eidolons are just being fed away. And now the wave actually bounces back. I want to see why this happens. Is this just a pull? So Secret gets off a great pull here. Zyak is complete. Am I saying his name wrong? Zyax? I, I hear Zyax, but... <laughs> um, he gets off a massive pull there. Only denies two creeps, but that's all you need. And now with the wave shoving, Crystalis is going to slightly put it into a position where it's actually pushing into him. But he's okay with this because he knows he can balance it out easily with Flak or just consistent autos. So he's actually aggro denying as the Enigma is out of range of the auto attacks or of the CS. And they're going to actually put pressure on Toby here. They're going a step further. Honestly, this feels a bit unnecessary to me, but okay, no, I completely take it back. That's why they're better than me. <laughs> uh, they get the kill, they get first blood, and yeah, that's that's freaking massive. Straight up massive. They get the key kills, and now they can go back to aggro the nine. Instantly as they get a kill, and instantly as he uses flak, he understands that, okay, this is going to hard shove the wave. I need to aggro the nine to sort of compensate. Maybe he flaks here to secure this creep in damage. No, okay. He's actually holding it hard for Eidolons. So if Toby does go for it here... No, okay, no. Now he decides to go for it off the Marcy Go. So the reason why you would use it there off Marcy Go is just so that the Enigma can't man up. Right? If you're going on the Nyx and you click Flak, it will make it way harder for Enigma to man up because uh, he'll just be lower HP as another Flak comes out. And he's just feeding the Eidolons. Why? I don't understand. 
I don't understand why Toby's doing this. I just feel like... I just think you don't. You know what I mean? I think what he should be doing is holding the ability, sacking here, and then leaving the Eidolons off to the side. The wave will shove in, and you can properly play it under tower, but now he could flack the tower if he wants. No, okay. He's going to chill. Just a complete disaster in the laning stage for, for Entity here. And it's not a favorable matchup. Don't get me wrong. I've played this lane. It's so awful. It's so unfun. I'm not saying Toby should be winning the lane at all. I'm just saying it shouldn't be this bad. And once again, he's going to... No, he's not going to feed six. Bruh. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. What? I, I can't believe my eyes. I actually can't believe my eyes. Okay, whatever, man. I'm not going to focus on it. Maybe he's just tilted, having a bad game, having a bad day. It's all right. Let's move on. So... Another flat comes out going really aggressive, abusing the 21. It's really great when carry players do this, or like pro players do this in general. Just understanding their one timing, really playing off of it. Right, just kind of baiting them in once again, getting another triple Eidolons. Just... Okay, triple Eidolons. How is he going to heal up? Sidekick? Is there a sidekick? Whoa, no point in sidekick. He'll take it now. He's got a salve. Surely you pop it on the gyro, right? Okay, getting the... Really surprised to see him not heal his gyro before leaving here. That seems like a big mistake from the Marcy. Okay, he actually opts to buy a salve. Really weird. <laughs> I feel like you have a... I guess he feels like maybe making the play on mid is just too important here. Off the uh, boat timing. So that's that's Zyx play. That's not why you're here. You're not here to watch him. But either way, let's continue on. At this point in the lane, it's going to be pretty simple. He's just going to farm. Um, he'll probably look to pull as much as he can. Okay, so the Marcy came back. Marcy's going to pull. He might even flack here. No, nah, it's a little bit deep. Oh, there's no pole camp. Okay. So there's no pole camp, but at this point in the lane, typically you could get ganked. Uh, it is a lean to mid, which means there's not too much of a threat, but no. Okay, the Eidolon's expired. Thank God. But just a great rotation from the Marcy. Let's see what he does off this. I would imagine... I was thinking maybe he would look for a side pole, but looks like they're going to actually just hit the tower. He'll probably flack off the tower here too. Um... Right? Yeah, okay. So he'll flack off the tower here too. And the reason why is he's just looking to put pressure on the tower. He knows the lane is in a complete state of domination. Kana thought he would maybe look to side pull, but with the Kunkka being here, he's going to let the wave shove in. So this is good awareness, saying, okay, Kunkka's here. I can just play around this. Eh, let's play probably that. Yeah, good good uh, discipline not to commit there. Reason being, okay, this is a good pull. Yeah. Especially with Nyx TPing down here, their best play is to kill the Gyro with Black Hole. And even though Enigma is getting stomped, he'll probably have it soon. Yeah. So th they have to make a play on him. They mass TP'd here, they have to make the play. And they hit the stun, but that's not going to do anything. So really good uh, attempt from Chrysalis to pull. Understanding that if TPs come to your lane, they have to make the Desperation play to kill you. If for whatever reason, even after TPs come to your lane, you can manage to pull, whether or not it's the hard camp or the small camp, it's going to be really great. Right? Even here, right? He's getting camped. He knows this. There's a good chance they're even still here. Right? They they could sm like fake back and smoke on him. It's definitely a play with Black Hole coming up. That's a play. He's and he he's got to know this is a play. I don't know what's happening. Like I can't see them on the map. I like kind of just like leaving the map dark so I don't have information either. But okay, Nick shows, which is kind of weird. I don't know why Nick's would show. I feel like now he definitely knows he has to play passive. But okay, over blocks there. That's actually a mistake. He shouldn't block that hard, but. I guess maybe the block kind of allows him to play a bit deeper under the tower. I don't think this is intentional, but he is, you can see, in between every single CS, he's moving back, right? And this is such great discipline from Crystalis. That's a wonderful ice path. That's great discipline from Crystalis here. And it's going to allow him to maybe get off the call down. Yeah, gets off the call down. Will end up going down, so just barely gets clipped by the ice path. Unfortunately dies, but gets off the call down, which could be enough to get some return kills and they're only going to get one, so not great. Messed up a little bit there. Maybe walked up too far. But you can see, he read the play. He understood it was coming. And honestly, the majority of you guys watching, I'm going to be real, just would have died. Right? You would have been CSing the wave from in the middle of the wave and gotten caught and just died. Um, and that's something you have to avoid. These deaths, you have to read the fact that they're in the area and just not get caught. Right? Don't bait your team to TP either. Because if you get gone on, you might be like, oh, my team should save me. It's like, nah, you're probably just baiting them to TP to a bad portion of the map when you could have just avoided the gank, 
by preemptively pulling or something in the source. So he's going to go to the triangle now. You know, Black Hole is online. You know, he can't definitely can't easily land at this point. Not safely. Gyro just has no disengage, no sustain. So you're better off playing for efficiency. And that's what he's going to do. As I was going to say, is he really going to show up to the top fight? It's not that he's weak. It's just that he's kind of low HP. So typically you wouldn't want to show up to a fight with this low HP unless the enemy is hard diving a tower and you know you're not going to get focused. Then maybe you can. But this rotation is great. Max flat cannon. Very simple. Very straightforward. Max flat cannon. Clear out the large camp with the tri camp. And yeah. Even using rocket barrage a little bit. Does have two clarities as well. Probably will pop one. No, okay. He's chilling. Even buys the Ograx first, which kind of insinuates to me that he's actually considering showing up to fights. Because otherwise, he would definitely buy the Mithril Hammer for farming. So, a bit odd is... What the... This pure goes down. What a weird game from Entity. Okay, good black hole. So, they turn it around. Crystal's is going to walk up the hill. So, they're looking to invade. Once again, good flat cannon usage. Never mind. Did he not take the talent? Oh, they changed it. I forgot they changed it. They got rid of the flat cannon range. I forgot they did that. Movement speed during rocket barrage. What a weird talent. So I guess, yeah, okay. So he took a point in rocket. I can imagine you just take... Honestly, the movement speed during rocket barrage is kind of banger. Because this ability is like 50% uptime at max. And 30 movement speed is pretty good. Maybe he'll take it, but later on. I could see that. The 200 health is good, but not really needed when you're going Ags BKB. Your HP pool isn't necessarily a problem, but maybe he'll take it the health anyway. Okay, he did. So, he'll clear out the mid wave. Information on the map. Sees a bunch of heroes top. Uh, sees Delina mid. Just, I think, for efficiency's sake, he's farming triangle. It's very efficient on Gyro to farm triangle. If you're on Dire, so on Radiant, as Gyro, you always want to farm triangle, right? You want to farm triangle. You want to be just taking this because it's just efficient, right? Uh, you also want to take top side, but unfortunately, his team is farming here. So, whatever, he'll take mid, right? If your team is top, you take mid. If they're both, you clear tri-camp and you run, like, kind of to this camp and this camp and you try to drag them together. But that's kind of crappy. You should usually kick your team out of mid or top. Optimally, if you're taking tri-camp, you kind of tell your offlaner to fuck off. <laughs> and, um, and you take his farm. So, yeah. Close to BKB. Oh, but what I was saying as well is that on Dire, if you can drag these camps together, do so. You know, flack these camps, take these camps... Right, flack this, then flack this, and then go back to your lane. If you can do that, it's really great. Uh, if you get kicked out from the Dire, whatever, just go farm triangle. Dire is so good for Gyro. Radiant Gyro is definitely worse than Dire Gyro to some extent, um, at least in terms of farming efficiency. But it's it's no big deal. So they're gonna go for the Roche. He'll clean this up. Maybe he'll take it actually because he's gonna siege. Yeah, okay. So he's got the BKB. Might look to siege. He'll find a kill onto Fishman. Easy cooldown. Into the flak. Oh, they don't want to commit. Good discipline, right? And most carry players would make the mistake here. They would tunnel vision too hard on the gyro. But really, what's so impressive about Crystalis here is that he's actually looking at the map as he goes on gyro. Which is why he even uh, uh, led that fight by not auto-attacking the gyro and in, um, auto-attacking the jakiro. Similar names. <laughs> uh, but rather by flacking. And the reason why you would do that, right? You would hit here and flack the wave instead of going on the... Jakiro is not necessarily because you think he's guaranteed to die, because he's not. Um, especially if he has range hops and a wand, which pros generally will. But rather because you just don't want to overcommit. And so you can see he's watching the minimap. Brood's not here. Kunkka's not here. Disruptor's not here. This is not a time to commit. Who cares about a Jakiro kill? That's not a game-changing kill. That's not going to swing anything. If it was convenient, great. It's not convenient, though, so he doesn't commit, which I absolutely love. He'll drag these together a little bit. Okay, right, nice dire farming. They're actually going to go for a smoke play, so they're going to show the brood top and look for a kill. Great play from the Knicks to break the smoke, though, unfortunately, uh, that is going to end that play. And here, I would imagine you kind of want to be efficient, so he'll he'll run through. They're going to run into the, the Jakiro. They'll clean him up. Maybe he'll go... No, he's going to go bottom here and try to kill the Eidolons. Oh, my God, he got them. Oh, my gosh. The amount of farm he's gotten from Eidolons this game is insane. As Oh, they actually killed the lead in the top. That's really good. So, funny enough, he's not going down bottom here. I thought maybe he would push out bottom and then TB mid and connect with his team that way. But he's actually just going to farm immediately to the to the mid lane. So, clearly feeling that, okay, I'm strong. I want to make this Aegis play as fast as I can. I don't feel like pushing out bottom and TPing mid would have been bad. But it would cause him to have to use his TP, to be fair. So, he'll come to mid now. He's got the Aegis. Has to be a little bit careful. Alright, the enemy team has a lot of poke. 
Here comes that poke that we talked about. Where's the ice path? Huh. That's unfortunate. Where was ice path, actually? I want to know. Oh, he, okay. He got pathing. You're supposed to click the ground there on Jakiro. That's really unfortunate. Because they really want to pop... They really want to pop Aegis there. Because it's still a minute. It's not short, right? Because he wouldn't have it now. And then maybe they can burst him here. But, okay. Saves his BKB. Good discipline. Won't insta-pop BKB here. And the reason why is there's no direct stun. The Lina's disengaging. Nyx disengaging. Gyro doesn't... Um, Jakiro... <laughs> keep doing that. Jakiro doesn't have Ice Path. At least not yet. So he doesn't have to pop it. Even though he doesn't have to. Yeah, he doesn't have to pop there. But, I mean, I could see why he would. Just so he wouldn't get stunned by Lina. But he did, definitely didn't have to. So, a bit of a mistake, I guess. Understandable, but a mistake. So, I bet I hit level 15. You're going to take the flat cannon attacks, I would imagine. What's the other one? Yeah, you're going to take flat cannon attacks. Bring the triangle together. Kind of just playing with his supports here, which I like. He could have played the top jungle, but I think he was a little bit uncomfortable in doing that. Because the enemy maybe could have invaded. Um, but also, it enables the brood just, just to kind of take that farm, which is nice too. Why does he have the staff of wizardry? He must not be paying attention. I guess it kind of doesn't matter, but... <laughs> so he'll get his axe, fight breaks out. Always drop the missile right away. So what I really love about him here is that he's dropping the missile. Always put down casual missiles. Put down the casual missiles. They set up for later plays. They'll set up for torrents, mercy jumps, glimpses, whatever it is. They'll set up for it. It can even just be flat cannon attacks. So puts down the casual missile. It's going to hit on the next mid. And look, right, this can transition into a mercy jump. Unfortunately, there's nothing for him to jump off of. But maybe Marcy could just kill the next here. If she had a jump target from the casual missile. He'll put another one probably down onto the Ember here. Yep, there you go, right? Uh, maybe it's better to put it on Jakiro just because it can't be Juke. But yeah, it hits the Ember, right? And just that, right? Maybe he gets bursted here by Ember. Eh, nah, he probably wouldn't get bursted. It's close. Can he get off his BKB? Yeah. And here comes... Okay, I thought he was going to be able to get Unleash off too. Wasn't able to, but... Yeah, it just survives. And this is him just being so farmed. Having a BKB Ags at minute 22 is just disgusting. Just disgusting amounts of net worth here. Top net worth, 13k net worth at minute 22 is, is pretty gross. As he gets follow-up stunned by Nyx. It's a reasonable play from Entity, but it just doesn't work out. As the boat rum comes out too. Great play from Nisha to keep him alive there. And that's one fight. I don't really understand the dragon scale. That seems a bit odd. I guess it helps you siege a bit, but not really. Uh, it's very meh damage. As they're going to go high ground here. It's very mad damage. You don't really... I guess the armor is okay. I guess the armor is okay. The main thing that's going to kill him is Lina. Lina's a pretty hard counter to Gyro typically. Because she outranges you. Even kind of outranges Flak. Later on into the game when she buys Dragonlance. Is, is the main thing. But... Is she dead? Oh, no! The spiders! Oh, they math. Nice missile. So, we'll see if he goes down here. But just want to kind of show off his positioning. And talk about that in terms of high ground sieges. So, keeping his flak. Definitely wouldn't want to use it on the creep wave here. Hold the flak. Don't be stupid and farm. You're going high ground. We'll try probably to flak off the wraith pack. That's a really value play. Anytime you're in some in a matchup where it's uh, phoenix, wraith packs, uh, tombstone. Hit those things with flak. It's giga value. Giga value if you can do so. So, he does it off the racks here just to kind of push them away. Right? Get some chip damage. Nearly kills the Lina. So... Not really chip damage, but <laughs> nearly kill damage. But okay, getting gone on. Bit of an awkward position. No BKB. He'll probably man up with the un with the uh, unleash. Yeah, just Marcy. Classic. Fishman might die if he's not careful. Okay, no. But are they gonna keep going? No, they they should back. They should reset. Let the Marcy heal him up in a second. Oh no, they're going in. I take it back. What a jump from Zyax. Whew, that was sh nasty. He's got the moves. Chains come out, but I don't think there's follow-up. There's definitely not. As the Unleash comes out, and that's going to be a full heal if he gets the kill. Okay, no, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm overhyping it a little bit. But um, moving on into Satanic. Good fake back. Love the discipline. I love when, when carry players can win a fight and then not tunnel vision on like the next objective. They just still get back to farming, right? There's nothing to do here. Bottom wave is not pushed in. Their main play is probably Roche. Uh... I don't think they're going to wait for it with how far ahead they are. They could force on Satanic, though. If I was playing here, yeah, I, th I think what he's saying here is like, you know, Ancient Camp is about to respawn in, in, in 20 seconds. I can kill it in time, and I'm close to Satanic. Let me just farm Satanic. I'd be telling my team, let me farm Satanic. Don't get gone on. I'm even surprised they're holding such an aggressive position on Secret here. 
personally, I feel like that's a bit risky and unnecessary. Just wait to Satanic. So they're really playing up, but here it is. Yep. Instantly. I love that. I love that decision. I love that even though he's 17k ahead, he can say, let me get my item. I don't need to keep killing them. Let me hit my next timing, my unkillable timing. And too many players don't do that type of thing, right? They get too caught up in, in the fact that they're winning fights. Their adrenaline's pumping. They're feeling good about the game. And then, you know, they don't make the safe play. They don't make the reliable play, which is 100% farming Satanic here into the Aegis. It's just a discipline play. If this is an average 3k pub, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Satanic is not... I mean, to be fair, I don't think they're even close to Satanic, to be honest. But let's say you are, they wouldn't farm it, right? They would get too caught up. They'd be like, my team is going to die. My team is going to feed. Just say, I'm farming Satanic. Be careful. If they die and you think it's the correct play, you're 800 gold away. You could farm two rotations of the Ancient Camp. That's going to put you really close to it. Then farm it. Make the safe play. Make the reliable play. And remember Roshan. Roshan carries these games, boys. Especially if you're going high ground on like Gyro. You don't have any good siege ability, right? Your Ags is okay and you have lifesteal now, but you really need the Satanic and the Aegis to do so. As they'll go high ground now, poking away. Doesn't want to commit. Should never dive. Should put down a casual missile if given the opportunity to do so. Maybe not on the Nyx, as it can set up Carapace, but eh, it's not that big of a deal. He probably can anyway. He's not going to die from full, um, most likely, against the enemy heroes. I don't think he would. They'd have to cast literally everything on him to do that, which into an Aegis is pretty crap. So they'll go high ground here. Should back up the long way. Yep, loves that he. T uh, I love that he takes the long way. Don't be stupid and run through the base. Never run through the base. Always take the long way. It's safer. Didi, okay. They might just go down mid here. I might be telling my team smoke mid, right? Zax is going to jump in. The reason why you would fake back and smoke mid here is there's a tier 2 bottom which you can't push. And you might want to use the DD, so they could intentionally actually force up the high ground here. Uh, but no. Okay. Secret really wanted to win. No chances. No no shenanigans as he finds the best item he could possibly get. The Titan's Deliver is such a broken item, in my opinion. The stats are just incredible. Magic resist, status resist, and base damage is incredible. It's so broken on certain heroes like Morphling and TB too. Probably best on Morphling, second best on TB. But uh, okay. Fight breaks out mid. I would imagine he's just going to ignore this, yeah. No need to get distracted. So, they're actually not going high ground. They're going to wait the Disruptor. Wow. Really? Are they? Or are they just waiting for Marcy? Okay, Marcy's dead. Are they going to wait Marcy now? <gasps> I think you do. Uh, yeah, I think you wait Marcy. You could get X'd and hit it. Maybe they'll do that. What are they doing? They should at least X and hit. Is there a Yules? No, 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 no. I mean, to be fair, they could like, I, nah, yeah, but you have X. Very weird. I feel like they should X and hit this, right? Because you don't really want to commit. Never mind, they're committing. I feel like you don't really want to do what he's doing here. It's fine, but now you're going to have to wait for the creep wave or go to the ancient camp and Satanic. He's actually going to take the risk and maybe Satanic the Eidolons. No, he's going to hold it and wait for the wave. Kind of risky because they could try to burn his Aegis here. But no, he'll play it, he'll, he'll play it well enough where he's not going to get it burned. And Flax going to kill Jakiro here, right? Can't make that mistake. Never walk up on the supports against Gyro when he's sieging. Where you have to play the tree line. You can't do what Fishman did there. That's a big mechanical mistake on his part. A positioning mistake on his part. And they're going to go on him. They're going to try to take him out. But I don't think he's dying. That's GG. But alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, I always like making these videos. If there's a specific game you want me to go over, I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. I'm happy to pick one from the comments. So if there's a hero, game, player you want reviewed, and you have the game, I would particularly appreciate it, and I'm extremely likely to make an analysis on what you want if you give me the match ID, just so I don't have to find it. If you don't have the match ID, it's okay. Just tell me, like, hey, it was game two between Secret uh, and Titi or something like that, right? And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. I'm really excited to the CTI and how it plays out. Uh, Seeker's absolutely owning, which is awesome to see. Great players. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.